Okay, we're going to have a look through um, just four of these questions today. Um, and we're going to look at what we need to do for them. Okay, so we've, we're starting off with looking at uh, a way of sorting our numbers uh, in this diagram. Um, we've got our four labels, even, multiples of nine, not even, and not multiples of nine. Okay, so we need to work out where these are going to go. The most uh, straightforward ones, the best place to start with these are going to be my even and my not even, or even and odd. Um, and I essentially I need to identify which rows or which columns are going to be that. If I look down, I've got combinations of both even and odd numbers, so it can't go there, which must mean it's going to have to be going uh, onto one of my rows. So if I look at my row here and look along, I have 72, 54, uh, 56 and 84. Those are all even, which must mean that uh, even goes here which also means that not even is going to go here. Okay, and I can double check that by looking along odd, 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 odd. Okay, so then I've just got multiples of nine and not multiples of nine. Okay, and that's as straightforward as spotting which numbers are in the nine times table and which numbers are not in the nine times table. If you're unsure of that, my advice would be to write that uh, next to the question so you can just double check that but what you'll do is you'll spot straight away here that these are our multiples of nine and these are not okay so that's how we're going to use our diagram there to sort those through uh, question 10 is a similar diagram similar diagram for sorting numbers but this time instead of labeling it we need to come up with numbers which go in each one. So I've got here, if I look at this, I have A, B, C and D, essentially. And if I think about the properties of A, well, A is going to have to be less than a 1,000 and a multiple of 20. OK, so with all of these, be as straightforward as possible with it. A multiple of 20 that's less than a 1,000 is 20. OK, don't need to do anything just smart with it. If I look at B now, B is still in my multiples of 20, but now B needs to be a thousand or more. Now, if you're uh, up to date with your multiples of 20 or two times table, your confidently placed value, you'll know that a thousand is a multiple of 20. And because it says a thousand or more, I can just pop my thousand in there for B, nice and straightforward happy days. For C, I need to have now something that is uh, less than a thousand and not a multiple of 20. So that's essentially any number between 0 and 999 that is not a multiple of 20. So 1. And then for D, it's asking me for a thousand or more and not a multiple of 20. OK, well, if a thousand is a multiple of 20, then a thousand and one isn't going to be a multiple of 20. OK, so with all of those, it's about finding the most straightforward one, first of all. And it's about just simplifying it and not trying to be too complex of anything that we're doing. Uh, question number 11 here. Uh, it says the numbers in these sequence increase by three each time. What that's telling me here is that this is a three times table. Okay, and I know that because it starts with three. It's my first sequence in the three times table. So it goes up by three, so it's increasing by three each time. But actually, it is in the three times table. So these are just any numbers in the three times table. Okay, um, now we have here the numbers in the sequence increase by five each time. Now, well, that tells me it's five times table, and yes, it is because it starts with a five. So this is my five times table. OK, uh, so both sequences will continue. So we're looking at our three times table and our five times table. OK, so we need to write a number greater than 100 that will be in both sequences. Now, this bit here that's saying it will be in both sequences this is essentially just saying it is a multiple 
of 3 and 5. Okay, it's a multiple of 3 and 5 because it's in both sequences, it's in both, multi it's in both times tables. So that means I need a, a number greater than 100 that I can divide equally into a whole number by 3 and by 5. Okay? And so if I start at 100, I can't, I can divide 100 by 5, but not by 3. Uh, the next number I could divide by 5 would be 105. And if I think about the number 105, I can divide that by 3 and by 5. So 105 is the first number that's greater than 100 and is a common multiple of 3 and 5. Because when you get a number that is in more than one times table, it is called that common multiple. Okay, and that common multiple is really key there. Uh, question number 12 says to write these numbers in the correct places on this sorting diagram. So I've got 16, 26 and 36. Interestingly down here, I've got uh, multiples of four, I've got multiples of six. In the middle then, that means they must be both and we can take our knowledge from the previous question that, oops, in pen please, that is, where have I got? My work's disappeared. There we go, back down here. So this here is going to be a common multiple of both four and six. Okay? So if I look at 24, 24 is in the four times table, 24 is in the six times table, fine. Okay, absolutely fine to get that done. So we understand that. 27, interestingly, is hanging out here outside of our circles on our Venn diagram because it is not a multiple of four and it is not a multiple of six. And I would know that straight away because 27 is an odd number. So it's not going to be in, in a multiple of an even number. Okay, I can use my number knowledge to help me out with that. So if I think about these, 16. 16 is a multiple of four, it's four squared. 16 is not divisible by six. So 16 is going to be a multiple of four only. 26, when I think about 26, now is 26 a multiple of four? No. Is 26 a multiple of 6? No. Why do we know that? Well, if I've got 24 here that's a multiple of both, the next number is going to be 24 plus 4 to be a multiple of 4, so it would be 28 be my next one in my 4 times table. And my next multiple of 6 after 24 would be 30. So 26, even though it's an even number, and even though it has a 6 in it, is not a multiple of 6, which means it has to come and hang out outside of the Venn diagram, a bit like 27. Okay, and then finally we have 36. Now 36 is 6 squared, 6 times 6 is 36, so it's a multiple of 6 for sure. 36 is also divisible by 4, and uh, 9 times 4 is 36, so we can use that times table knowledge there. It means it's a multiple of both 4 and it's a multiple of 6, which means it has that special title of being a common multiple of 4 and 6. And as it's a common multiple of 4 and 6, I can pop it in the central part of my Venn diagram here.